Hello and welcome back to another guide. My name is Saiken and today we're going to take a look at Jagged Alliance 3, specifically weapons, all about weapons. My guides are concise, precise and on point, no repetition, no BS. In 10 to 15 minutes I will tell you everything you need to know about weapons in Jagged Alliance 3, so join me on that ride and let's see what the weapon categories are all about. So, when looking at weapons, there is a lot to take in. Let me just get out of the way how I would uh, judge weapons. Jack the Lions has basically two parameters in my perspective uh, that determine whether or not a weapon is feasible. Number one is their ammo consumption. The game runs on a limited ammo budget. So you will see that your squad uh, typically does have a limited uh, set of ammunition, which means typically weapons that uh, consume less ammunition are better than weapons that consume more ammunition. Secondly, range and damage. Uh, typically weapons that are longer range and deal more damage will of course be more efficient uh, than shorter and less damaging weapons. There are seven categories of weapons within uh, Jack the Lions. Pistols, uh, shotguns, SMGs, assault rifles, rifles in general, any form of melee weapon and I would say a miscellaneous um, special weapon category for um, machine guns, mortars and, um, and uh, grenade launchers. So those are the seven weapon categories. What I will do is I'll go through each of them individually, showcase a little bit how they look like and how they play and what's good about them and what is bad about them. All right, in order to look at the different weapon categories, I resorted back to Tier Maker just to make it a little bit more illustrative. The reason why I'm talking about uh, weapon categories instead of individual weapons at the beginning of the video is we want to effectively understand how general weapons position themselves. And although there are differences between the individual weapons of a, uh, of a certain category, they are not that uh, large. It is much larger in between the different categories. So. How I will uh, judge the, the weapons is basically on their range, on their ammo com uh, uh, consumption, and the third category would be their ability to penetrate armor. Let's shortly talk about the mechanic of armor penetration. Every single weapon has a certain armor penetration value that could be either none, light, medium, or heavy. Um, if an armor penetration value is not higher than what the armor of the enemy is, two things will happen. Number one, the enemy will take full uh, armor value with light armor that's 30%, with medium armor 40%, with heavy armor that's 50%, plus you are unable to crit that enemy. So it is very important to overcome armor uh, penetration. Armor penetrating rounds for specific weapons up your armor penetration by two steps. So anything that has light or higher armor penetration with uh, armor penetrating rounds can penetrate all of the armor and therefore crit. Keep that in mind because some of the weapons will have no armor penetration. Let's uh, start from left to right. I ordered them from uh, the shortest range to the longest range and we'll just go uh, strictly through that. You might be of different opinion on the individual uh, placing of these weapons, but keep in mind it's an illustrative purpose. We're starting with uh, melee weapons, which I would generally put into B tier. B tier uh, for the following reason. <clears throat> there can be dedicated melee builds that are incredibly good and that can be absolutely fantastic. And in that case, melee weapons shine. Melee weapons tend to ignore armor and penetrate them uh, straight through, which is great. Melee weapons also are fantastic damage and they conserve ammunition. However, that all of that being said, there are plenty of opportunities within uh, Jack Alliance 3 where you do not start in melee, where you cannot just sneak up uh, to the enemy or where there will be larger fields um, of water, swamp or whatever between you. And in that case, the melee weapon simply deals zero damage. Hence, I cannot give it a rating higher than that. When you are next to an enemy and you have the ability to freely sw uh, swap uh, the weapons the first time <clears throat> and you do have a high strength, then melee weapons excel. Let's go to pistols next. Pistols are solid D tier. There are a couple of things that are going for pistols and I will not 
necessarily say that all pistols uh, might be in that uh, the later pistols desert eagle and anaconda are a little bit higher but generally speaking pistols aren't working very well they consume less ammunition than other weapons so that is what they have going for them but their overall damage with 15 to 18 isn't really phenomenal that means pistols are also on top of its short range so all of that is a bundle uh, kind of comes to a rather non-positive uh, judgment when we look at the overall tiers. They use 9mm rounds mostly. Anaconda and Desert Eagle are exceptions in that, uh, which use 44 rounds. So they are good in order to not compete with other um, ammunitions. But from a pure standpoint of using pistols in the late game, other weapons are simply more efficient. So I would say on uh, from all of uh, the weapons, they are pretty much um, uh, on the bottom of the tier ring list. Which brings us to shotguns. <clears throat> shotguns are an interesting uh, are an interesting element. I would put them between A and B tier. And here's the reason why. Shotguns can be used for a variety of interesting uh, options. Number one, shotguns typically expose the enemy so they are losing cover, which is great for follow-up uh, shots with others. Typically, shotguns, with the exception of uh, the auto shotguns, will not require a lot of ammunition so that's what they have going for them as well they are slightly better than melee weapons when it comes to uh, the range however uh, the uh, ability points that you need in order to use shotguns are the the longer the range the uh, typically and the higher the damage typically uh, they will require more ap so the auto shotguns will require six ap to shoot However, you can mod shotguns, specifically the Auto 5, in a way that uh, they have short barrels, and we'll come to that later in the video, but uh, you can mod them so that they only take 3 AP, and in that case, shotguns fulfill an important purpose, because with certain perks, you can shoot and gain free movement, so effectively, shooting with a shotgun will give you more free movement than you normally would have with the same other movement. In that regard, Shotguns can be used to efficiently close the gap. Indoors, they are fantastic, but since the majority of the game is outdoors, I cannot really, with a good conscience, uh, give them anything much higher than B plus uh, rating. Maybe I indicate it like that. They are better than melee uh, weapons in terms of more versatility, but they fill very much the same niche. Which brings us to SMGs, so the larger or more older brother of um, pistols. I should say for both pistols and SMGs that they do have something going for them, which is called run and gun. These are individual abilities that uh, the that most of uh, the um, uh, weapons in that carry, uh, category, with the exception of the FAMAS um, for the SMGs, uh, do have. Uh, run and Gun allows you to move and shoot uh, with uh, talents like Frog Leaping, where you start in cover and then uh, get f uh, even more free movement and then move to the next uh, cover. You can actually use your free movement first, then use Run and Gun, and then essentially end in the next cover. So it's kind of a Shock Trooper build, and if you combine SMGs with, uh, for instance, shotguns or melee weapons can be a quite level and deadly combination where um, as these weapons allow you to already deal damage, uh, start uh, softening up the target and then once you've closed in uh, range, they can actually be quite uh, devastating. Now the problem tendentially with SMGs is that you are um, restricted to kind of the area of 16 to 20 range. Some of them with longer uh, barrels can go up to 26 range, which isn't really that great. And we'll come to the weapon sets in a, a second. So more often than not, you will find yourself out range from the enemies. The accuracy goes down. The other problem that SMGs have, why I wouldn't rate them in B tier, is the whole burst fire and out of fire mechanic. SMGs generally do have burst fire only. Let's talk about burst fire. Uh, the In order to quote unquote balance automatic weapons um, with normal uh, gameplay, what uh, the devs have done is they reduce the damage for burst fire by 50%. Uh, 
um, and for auto fire even more 60 to 80 percent depending on the weapon um, so that that means if you are shooting uh, three bullets you cannot just simply calculate all three bullet damage together use a commando three times nine damage is not 27 damage but you're using 27 and basically half it so in reality what you're talking about is more like 15 damage assuming that all three bullets hit which brings us to the next problem that the burst fire me uh, mechanic uh, introduced also recoil so there is a good chance that bullets are going to miss without going too deep into the recoil mechanic it's determined on based on your strength a couple of uh, weapon mods um, can further recoil uh, recoil reduce and a couple of talents like close combat uh, fighting could also reduce uh, the recoil further and make it more likely that you're hitting so it is definitely possible with the right kind of setup to um, hit all of the three shots. Nonetheless, uh, the 50% penalty, you cannot get rid of that unless you're using mods. So bottom line, these weapons don't deal fantastic damage. They do not necessarily penetrate a lot of um, armor. Yes, most of them use nine millimeter rounds, which per se is good. There are a couple of them using Warshaw packed rounds and a couple of them using uh, using uh, NATO rounds. But generally speaking, these weapons are more for repositional purpose. And as the game goes on, unfortunately, that becomes less and less relevant. So they are solid D tier, which brings us neatly to the assault rifles, which I would put into A tier for a whole host of reasons. Number one, assault rifles do have a very decent damage output uh, the fnl for instance uh, does have three times 15 uh, points of damage so even with the redu uh, with the reduction that's still a baseline of 22 and a half points of damage if you hit all of the shots and believe me with their range which goes up to 36 you pretty much will hit a lot of uh, the shots on top of them they do have great modding opportunities specifically the mod uh, opportunities for grenade launchers make them a very versatile weapon so they do have the range they are moderate in terms of ammo con uh, consumption unless you're going full auto the entire time their range is fantastic their damage is above average they typically have an armor penetration of light which means that with uh, the right uh, ammunition you will penetrate all of the um, armor in the game and you essentially do have a special weapon with a grenade launcher and a normal uh, weapon included into one another special shout out also for overwatch builds um, i'm a big fan of them an overwatch focus build with kill zone and assault rifles can hit twice onto every single enemy with the right amount of armor penetration that means if you do have a wider overwatch cone and someone lying down with a tripod that is almost 100 percent hit with every single shot and a, a, um, a dedicated overwatch character will unleash two bursts per enemy um, just for them moving not uh, not even for any of the other triggers and the sword rifles um, are action point efficient so you can get up to five or six of uh, those um, of those bursts in a single round that's just a, an immense amount of damage it won't be as focused damage as, as you would be expecting but if you're using that combined with a grenade launcher for instance you can uh, soften them up with a grenade then overwatch all of them and see just how you're melting through them so very very uh, good weapons and very versatile which brings us neatly to the snipers which reign supreme in S tier. There's nothing wrong with a sniper. As a matter of fact, there's everything right with snipers. There's no minimum engage range. You can shoot with a sniper in melee. And snipers just have it going for them and they have uh, it going all for them in the right direction. Snipers use little amounts of ammunition. Most of the snipers come with at least um, uh, light uh, penetration. Uh, the heavier ones even with medium uh, penetration as a standard. Snipers does ha do have an incredible engagement range of 40 to even up to 60 later which is phenomenal 
Add to that uh, that the snipers um, uh, can all mount a thermal scope, which if you're fully zoomed in, negates any form of cover, no hunkering down, uh, no vision penalties. Snipers just have it going for them. Doesn't matter that you only shoot once or twice per round because you're killing with every single shot. You have the ability to uh, crit, Headshots are incredibly level and just the amount of engagement range that all of them have is so, so uh, dominating in the game. Unfortunately, uh, in terms of balance at the moment, uh, the sniper weapons are far by far the best weapons. Uh, they use typically um, 44 rounds for Winchesters and co NATO rounds for the NATO snipers and the Dragunov uses Warsaw Pact rounds um, plus the M82 in late game uses 50 cal. Listen, it doesn't matter which of uh, the snipers you're, uh, you're using. All of them, even the Gewehr, is a very, very uh, good weapon. So you can simply use them and start popping heads. Uh, they, in my playthrough, made the game so easy that I needed to resort back to other weapon categories in order to just create a challenge. So if you want to trivialize it for yourself, snipers are the way to go. Which nicely then brings us to machine guns and would I have um, recorded this video at patch uh, 1.02, uh, they would have potentially rained up here as well because they were just a menacing force. Uh, nowadays, I would put them into B tier and potentially towards the end of B tier. And I know that this might be controversial because a lot of uh, people do not like machine guns as much as they liked them before. But hear me out before you're going all crazy. So the clear disadvantage of machine guns is their high ammo con uh, consumption. You cannot use them on a regular. Full stop. That's just it. Uh, it is not sustainable to play the game with a machine gun and just continue using it throughout all of uh, the missions. However, there are ways around ammunition shortage. There are ammo vendors that you can uh, buy, uh, buy from if you know where they are located and you can craft ammunition to a degree. So I'm not saying it's perfect, but you can at least succumb and work around that huge disadvantage. The second disadvantage of them is uh, they are hit the hardest uh, by the nerves of auto uh, fire where most of them are using really long salves, uh, salvos and auto fire and they essentially uh, will have a problem because that is quite heavily uh, nerfed for machine guns. So you will, won't deal the same damage. However, I still tested it. I used the Minimi, I used uh, the uh, RPV-74 uh, and uh, I used the Heckland Koch variant and they are dealing more damage on Overwatch than the respective uh, assault rifles would do. So if you're willing to invest the ammunition, you can delete up to five enemies before the game even starts. A very nice combination is getting your Overwatch uh, person in action, laying them down so that they have uh, the bonus of uh, the stock and then uh, opening with a sniper headshot. This weapon will just tear through them completely. So they do have just like the other BT category items, a very distinguishable strength, but also very distinguishable weaknesses. Hence, I put them into B tier. And then finally, um, uh, specifically grenade launchers and uh, RPGs, uh, which I would put into A tier. Uh, the only disadvantage is that you will not find a lot of ammunition throughout the game. It's still plentiful. Uh, they do have a fantastic range, specifically the rocket launchers uh, rival the snipers and uh, they will destroy a lot of the environment. They will also deal phenomenal amounts of damage, AOE damage on top of it. So whenever you do have a machine gunner nest or something nasty where you just cannot push up, these are the right weapons. However, they do have a couple of disadvantages if you ha do have them in your hand, not in the inventory, your free movement range will automatically be reduced. That also means if you do have them as number uh, two, so as the second uh, weapon, uh, that will also happen. Secondly, the ammo shortage but other than that they are just fantastic weapons so now that we do have 15 minutes straight of weapon categories out of the way let me just show you uh, showcase to you how the stats of the individual weapons look 
In order to do that, we're going to look at Duck2K's Jagged Alliance 3 Mercen Item Stat Sheet. I will link it in the doobly-doo down below so that you can take a look uh, by yourself. I will just shortly go through the different categories. Um, essentially, what the sheet does is it gives you the damage, it gives you the APs that are needed for the different um, forms of shots, it'll give you kind of aiming bonus that, uh, that you do have with certain weapons, the ammo type, and more importantly, the penetration that uh, that you uh, could use plus a very detailed list of all of the mods so before we go through all of the weapons because the, i don't want the video to exceed uh, 20 minutes i'll just highlight a couple of the weapons my general uh, consensus is weapons of a similar tier or approximately as good as one another there are some exceptions to the rule but generally speaking the weapons are as good as the others Noticeable uh, exceptions in the pistol uh, space would be the Anaconda for very uh, for a number of reasons. Number one, different uh, ammo, uh, but number two, also relatively long range. So you can see that here. Um, additionally uh, to that, uh, the second uh, the second exception is the Glock. Uh, Glock does have a burst fire mode uh, that you can see here, and uh, you can use two Glocks in order to just unload a lot of ammunition onto the head of someone and finally the third uh, exception or uh, noticeable uh, a noticeable pistol is the desert eagle with just an incredibly high damage but a quite uh, limited range both of the high damage weapons use 44 ammunition the glock uses normal nine millimeters so um if I was to use weapons I had uh, if I was to use pistols I would use the anaconda I've made a relatively good experience with that. Moving on to shotguns. Shotguns, in my perspective, fall under either of two use cases. Number one, closing range. If you want to do that, the Auto 5 is your best friend. It has the lowest um, AP cost of four. You can mod it to be short barreled. Then it has an AP cost of three. Uh, combine it with, uh, free, um, with free movement after shotgun shot and use an increased free movement range. And you essentially will be a very very fast mercenary move all of your free movement shoot again move rinse and repeat switch to a different uh, gun just like your machete for instance and kill the enemy up close the second option for uh, for shotguns is actual close combat i tended to have uh, the a uh, a12 uh, for that uh, the unique uh, Mabex's argument invalidator, which you get in uh, Port Cacao, could work with that as well. But the AA-12 uh, with a heavy, heavy mod um, uh, arsenal of five is better once it is fully modded. And really, uh, when you go into bunkers or underground uh, areas, this is fantastic. You can even use it for Overwatch. I've successfully used it for some overwatches and the triplets three times 26 points of uh, damage are just uh, turning everything into a red bloody mess. You can hit multiple opponents with that and it's just a fantastic weapon up close. Unfortunately it will consume quite a bit of shotgun ammunition and you might find yourself needing to craft some more. Moving on to the SMGs, highlights here from my perspective would be the AKSU and the Commando. Uh, which both use uh, the Warshaw Pact and respectively the 5.56 millimeter uh, rounds. They do have decent range, they do have the run and gun ability, uh, they do have decent damage as well. I used both of them in the, uh, in the playthrough. Another highlight would be the MP5, if you want to uh, stick with 9 millimeters. It is very much moddable with six maximum mods, that's great. However, keep in mind the MP5K, and I noticed that as well, has no armor penetration, so it means that if you have armor penetrating rounds, you only go up to medium armor. Uh, Lion's Roar, okay. Uh, MP5K, potentially a little bit too short range for my taste. I couldn't really make it work, and um, I therefore prefer to stick with the other weapons. Assault Rifles, um, base information here, all of them are good. There is not a single one, uh, maybe the FAMAS uh, as, the, as uh, the weakest of all of them. But other than that, 
uh, there is not a single one that I would not uh, use. You can now have different flavors. Of course, the AK-74 is great. Of course, AUX are great. Of course, G-36 uh, are great. If you don't mind repairing, the FN Fell is a fantastic one. All of them are good. My point is, you can see the number of mods with all of uh, them and you uh, can highly modify them to your liking. I personally uh, prefer uh, to either mod them for full Overwatch or to uh, go for uh, the um, grenade launcher built with a quick uh, prism quick sco uh, scope. That way you could uh, shoot the head of someone and then afterwards unleash a uh, grenade and uh, move on. So. All of them are really, really good. So I couldn't even pick kind of my quote unquote favorite. And I uh, think it is also a bit misleading to say that there is like one best weapon, um, one best assault rifle in the game. You can beat the game with all of them. Keep in mind, some of them, just like the Orc, do not have a armor penetration. So that might be relevant for you for later. Um, some of them, like the G36, do have the ability to quick change if you mod them that way. I found that always quite neat. Uh, so you could load, for instance, armor penetrating rounds in here and just quick change when uh, there are armored enemies. Moving on to the rifle, uh, there are a lot of highlights here. But look, at, at the base, uh, the four rifles down here are absolutely fantastic. I would even say the Dragunov is, uh, would fit into that ca uh, category as well. The Winchester is good because it uses ammunition that the others don't use. Can be perfectly um, serviceable for kind of a mid-range character. Uh, the PSG-1, the M24 uh, and the M82 are just absolute beasts in their own right. They kill and kill and kill. The Dragunov is good as well. So. I mentioned it, all of them are S tier weapons and there is really nothing that they cannot do. In terms of machine guns, a couple of highlights, the AK-21 uh, um, as well as the RPG-74 were the ones that work the best for me due to their heavy amount of mods. If you widen the cone, um, the both of them are just life-ending machine guns and with a lot of rounds that they uh, that uh, with extended magazines 90 here 120 there uh, you can just uh, go to town with all of uh, the enemies that uh, come uh, close to you finally uh, i would call out the rpg as uh, being super heavy super long range fantastic weapon the mgl also can be a good uh, uh, weapon i used uh, that for flashbang grenades uh, which will keep the enemies at bay. Finally, uh, the melee weapon. Um, I like machetes a lot, sharpened machetes, potentially highest damage in the game, but they can unsharpen themselves. If you uh, side against Luigi, you can get the thing. Thing also very, very uh, good weapon. Use that until the very end of uh, the game. And that's really it. Those are the weapons. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed yourself. Um, Jagged Alliance offers plenty, plenty of uh, options to play them. Here you can uh, see a couple of uh, the builds. Um, my Igor used uh, the Auto 5 uh, shotgun, like I mentioned it, with 3 AP to get uh, closer. Barry used the Winchester and had explosives just uh, because you can throw them without changing your weapons. Hogbite uh, is the uh, imp in my case uh, that has used uh, both a machine gun and a overwatch focused <clears throat> rifle i can tell you he has potentially had uh, some of uh, the most important kill streaks uh, mid-range uh, character ice with a winchester and another sniper and then uh, dual sniper on live fire dual sniper on md this team all level 10 completely destroyed the game they didn't even take damage at uh, the end so i can tell you uh, the 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 weapons the longer the range the less ammo they are using the better they are and then if you play that way you will end up with tons and tons of ammunition where you can switch to your liking so that is uh, the efficiency uh, per weapon uh, guide. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like those guides, I have a, a couple more for Jacket Alliance and for other games as well. I wish you a great day and see you all later. Bye bye.